Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the review of the HB Chromebook 13 G1. It's that beautiful Chromebook we just unboxed with a Core M Skylake processor, QHD Plus screen, and beautiful looks to boot. So let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. As you know, we just unboxed this beautiful HP Chromebook 13. And I have to say, so far, I'm pretty impressed. What you get with the HP Chromebook 13 is a very high-end, premium-looking device. As you can see from this brushed aluminum and its understated logo and non-color HP branding or Chromebook Chrome branding, it really does stand out. It is a very premium-looking device. <laughs> Let's talk about what you get out of the box. First, you get two USB Type-C ports. You get a USB 3.1, and we'll talk about that in a moment because you are able to drive both an SSD drive external and a spinning hard drive external as well. Good touch, HP. You have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Nothing else on this side. Moving to the other side, you have a micro SD card slot and nothing else over there. There's nothing on the front, and on the back of the device you have a chrome hinge. Uh, very fingerprint heavy, but that's to expect with shiny chrome on the back. On the bottom of the device is a matte plastic bottom, although I don't mind that because you want to dissipate some of the heat, and it does work pretty well. As far as the screen is concerned, what you get is a 3200 by 1800 13-inch Beautiful IPS screen that I have to say is the best I've ever seen on a Chromebook short of the Google Chromebook Pixel. But this has to be one of the best screens I've seen so far. Unfortunately, it's not a touch screen. I would have liked to have seen a touch screen on this device. Now, as far as keyboard is concerned, it has black keys, which are island style, chiclet style keys. Nicely spaced out, but not the greatest key travel. It's a little bit shallow in my opinion, but overall decent typing experience on this. The trackpad is decent size, although it wasn't as responsive as I was hoping it would be. So as far as the trackpad is concerned, it's so-so. Now, as far as the performance is concerned. Let's take a look at the results from the Octane 2.0 score. As you can see from the Octane score, it did a 21,604. Excellent score with its Core M3 Skylake processor. It did much better than other Chromebooks in the same category. To give you an idea of just how good the performance is on the HP Chromebook 13, Take a look at the ASUS Chromebook Flips results on the same test. It did a 7,273, much less than the 21,604 the HP Chromebook 13 G1 did. So that is just an indication of how good that Core M3 Skylake processor just is. Now the HP Chromebook 13 comes with Bang & Olufsen Play speakers. Now to me, that's more of a marketing gimmick than actual performance. And let's take a look and a listen at our latest video, which is the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series unboxing and first impressions. So take a look at that video to check that out. But in the meantime, let's take a look and a listen to the speakers and the audio quality on the HP Chromebook 13 G1. Take a listen. Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today we have another unboxing. In the studio is the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series. It's a refreshed model with the Core i7 Skylake processor. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes SSD, stylus, gold color, and a good price to boot. So let's find out what you get inside the box. As you can hear, the HP Chromebook 13 G1 had decent sounding speakers, not the best in class and not the worst. I think the Bang & Olufsen branding is a gimmick and that's all it is. I really think this is mid-level sound device on this supposedly premium product. 
As far as the webcam is concerned, it has an HD webcam, and here I am, as you can see, on the webcam. Not bad, not the best, not the worst I've ever seen. So overall, is the HP Chromebook 13 a buy or a don't buy? I'm going to have to say it's a buy with some caveats. First, let's talk about what I do like, and then we'll talk about what I think this device is missing. First, I like the fact that it has a beautiful QHD+, 3200 by 1800 resolution, and I love the fact that it has beautiful viewing angles, it does get bright, and it does have good color representation. But it doesn't have a touchscreen. And to me, with Android apps coming very soon via the Google Play Store, I think this might be a negative. Although the screen is beautiful, I wish it was a touchscreen so we could run those Android apps properly on this device. Next, I like its battery life. I was able to get anywhere from seven to eight hours, and that's with about 70% brightness. If you turn it down, you might even get more on this device. And I like the fact that it did last all day and I didn't need to be running to the outlet every few hours like I did with some of the other Chromebooks that I've tried in the past. Now, as far as performance is concerned, I was very impressed. As you saw from the Octane 2.0 test, this thing did very well. Remember, it's got a Core M3 Skylake processor, it's got four gigabytes of RAM, and it did very well. So I'm very impressed with the performance. So as far as gaming is concerned, as far as somewhat intensive tasks, you can do it on this. It's got, a, again, that Core M3 Skylake processor. So good job, HP, with the processor. And don't forget, it is available with a Core M5 if you're willing to spend the price. I also like the fact that you have two USB Type-C ports. Unfortunately, they're located on the same side of the device, but it would have made more sense to put one on each side. So this way, if you're facing a different direction, you can just plug it into the more convenient port. But I do appreciate two USB Type-C ports, especially in this kind of device. I also like the fact that it has four gigabytes of RAM. Now, it does come in eight gigabyte flavor, which for more money, you can get it, but I don't know if you need it. Four gigabytes of RAM in Chrome OS to me is more than enough, especially when you're using multiple tabs in Chrome, which is really what you're really going to be doing with this most of the time. So four gigabytes of RAM did well. It does have one USB type A port, which is a 3.1, and I was able to connect both an external HD or spinning hard drive, which worked flawlessly, and I was able to attach an external SSD drive, which also worked perfectly. So from that front, yes, I can report external drives, both spinning hard drives and SSDs do work. So here's what I also like about this device, the keyboard. I like the fact that the keys are nicely spaced out, the keys are backlit, and the travel, although a little bit shallow, was good enough for me to type on for extended periods of time. So overall, a very good experience. Although there were a couple of negatives. First, I think the backlight could have been a little bit brighter. And I didn't see anywhere I can, could control the backlight levels. And I wish it did have an easier way to do that. I'm not aware of it, so if anybody is aware of how to change the backlighting settings, please let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> The trackpad. Well, the trackpad was a mixed bag. Although I liked the fact that the trackpad was nicely sized and was somewhat responsive, I felt it could have been a little bit more responsive. So the trackpad was a so-so mixed bag. It was usable, but not the best in class, that's for certain. Now here's what I don't like about this device. I was a little disappointed with the Bang & Olufsen speakers. I thought I was going to get better sound out of these name brand speakers. But to me, it's more of a gimmick. It didn't get very loud and it was a little bit tinny. But it wasn't the worst in class as you heard and it certainly wasn't the best in class. So the speakers to me were okay at best. Not great, but not the worst either. And finally, I love its looks. The sleek design, brushed aluminum, thin and light, really makes this device stand out. It's a head turner. When I brought it to the office, people were asking me, what is that? The new MacBook? I said, no, this is the new one from HP. And I love its beautiful brushed aluminum design. Let's talk about price. At $599, this device to me is overpriced, especially because I feel Chrome OS should come in at anywhere from $399 to $499 at most. 
This is coming in at 599 and we're not getting a touch screen. And to me, that might be a deal breaker and it might be a deal breaker for some who want to run Android apps when it is rolled out very soon. So without the touch screen, you might be limited later on with certain Android apps. I thought this device should have come in at around $400 to $500 at most. I do appreciate that HP is trying to make this a higher end device, a more mid-level device. It doesn't rise to the level of the Pixel, but it does fall somewhere below that. And to me, that is a good first step. Where they can improve with this device is drop the price a little bit and give us a touch screen. This thing would be a beast. So let's find out if HP will do that. So overall, it is a buy with those caveats in mind. So it will be a decision you will have to make. I really did enjoy this device. I love the way it looked and I love the way it felt using it. And to me, the overall user experience was excellent. I really enjoyed using Chrome OS. Somebody who uses Mac and Windows a lot, that's saying quite a bit. So stay tuned, we have a lot of exciting things upcoming here at AMD Tech. I have a special review of the Dell XPS 13 2016 edition with a Skylake processor and gorgeous QHD Plus touchscreen, gorgeous looks, carbon fiber design. We'll have a full review of it coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. Also, we have the unboxing of the Techlast T-Book 10, and on order is its keyboard dock, and what makes that keyboard dock so special is it has a built-in battery that will add additional battery life to the device. So once we get that into the studio, we will review that along with the T-Book 10, which the review is coming very soon. Unboxing coming up next, so stay tuned for that. So until then, this is Andrew. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video, and until next time, see ya.